June 28th, 1998, folks. June 28th, 1998. This man, Mark Halloway, also known as The Undertaker, threw Mick Foley off of a hell in a cell. Mick Foley, the first man to take a dive off of a hell in a cell, okay? Dude broke some ribs. I believe he broke his, like, lip, lacerated, all messed up, okay? Some of you are like, duh! Don't think I cracked out the wrong video. I was trying to learn about house hacking, and this dude's it's a wrestling video. But then some of you are like, but you know what? Wrestling's really cool, so I'm just going to stay here. Well... Double treat for you. This this is that house hacking video. We're going to talk about house hacking, and it's related to this. Why? Because what my man Mick Foley did, taking this epic, epic bump that will forever be ingrained in the hearts and minds of wrestling fans like myself, like many of you out there for the rest of our lives, uh, that's how the man made his living. He made his living. Getting thrown off of like 30-foot steel structures and breaking bones, man. Is it fun? No. Is it safe? Definitely not. Did it pay his bills? Yes. Did he become a Hall of Famer? Yes, absolutely. Right? So, sometimes you can do things that are horrible, tough, hard, painful, but you're still going to make money. Right? And that, folks, is how I'm going to tie this all back to house hacking because I got a client today. His name is Rich. And Rich, you have a plan. And your plan of attack is to house hack a property. And you do not want this property to cost more than $50,000 in totality. You want a duplex in the Cleveland market in 2022. You want to live in one half. You want to rent the other half to tenants. And it cannot be a duplex that costs more than $50,000. You are hell-bent on traveling cross-country to move to Cleveland to do that plan. Is that plan possible? Yes. Is that plan feasible? Yes. Is this video going to provide you a roadmap to doing that, to accomplishing that goal, Rich? Yes. Do I think... It's a good idea. No. Do I think it's going to be fun for you? No. Do I think it's going to be easy? No. Do I think it's going to hurt? Oh, hell yeah. Give me a hell yeah. Woo, Stone Cold. Tyler, insert the Stone Cold commercial right now. Seriously, guys, guys. 10% off, man. Promo code HWTV. Don't say your boy JY's never gave you nothing, right? But seriously, Rich, right now, we're going to get into the details, the numbers, on a deal that will accomplish your goals. I will show you how you can house hack a duplex that costs less than $50,000 in the United States of America today. There are locations where this is possible. Again, it's going to be a bumpy ride, bro. Just like taking that bump off the steel cage. That hurt this man a lot. Uh, it did turn out well for him in the end. Maybe it'll turn out well for you in the end. I can't guarantee that. But what I can guarantee is the path to get to where you're trying to go is going to be very tough, very difficult, very hard. So if you go down this path at the very least, I want you to know that your boy Jay Wise is here to cut it to you guys straight. All right. Some real estate agents, they only get paid when the deal closes. So you say, hey, it's like asking your barber, hey, man, do I need a haircut? He's like, oh, hell yeah, you do, bro. I don't do that. I cut it to you straight. So if this is what you want to do, hey, man, not a problem. I will show you how you can get it done, but I need you to know what the real experience is going to be. With no fluff. Let's go. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs I'm going through the MLS and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show, y'all. This is the part where we're going to have to stop. We're going to stop. We're going to stop talking wrestling and we're going to talk all real estate. No more 
wrestling puns or jokes for the rest of the video. No, I was going to think of one, but no, I'm not doing it. All real estate, okay? And this deal, this deal, we're going to put this deal in a headlock for my guy, Rich. Damn it, I did it again. Sorry, Rich. All right, so here's the deal. This is a duplex, okay? And this is what you want to do. First, let me give you the address, brother. One, three. 414 Ferris Avenue, Cleveland, Ohio, 44105. Just hit the market three weeks ago. 18 days on the market. Price is 42500 This is how you can accomplish your goal, your plan, the plan that you want to do. You said to me, you're like, hey, right now I'm having credit issues. I cannot get a loan, but I have a total of $57,000 to play with. I am determined to move from where I live in expensive market, build my business, start from the ground up, in the Cleveland market, I need a place to live, I need a house heck. Can you get this done for me? Yes, I can. Yes, it's possible. But you have paid me money uh, to advocate for you, to consult with you, to provide you true insight. As somebody who did do house hacking himself, as somebody who has become a millionaire through real estate, as somebody who has sold over $200 million and runs the largest property management company of its type in this market, I can absolutely show you the path, but I ain't going to I ain't going to fuck with you, dude. I ain't going to pussyfoot around. I'm not going to tell you it's all sunshine and rainbows if it's going to be a tough, tough, tough business. And what you want to do is going to be very tough. Why? Because it's 2022. Getting a duplex in this market for under $50,000, very hard to do unless you're in an F-class neighborhood. Now, when I say F-class neighborhood, folks, I want you guys to refer to the ultimate guide to grading Cleveland neighborhoods. Rich, it is for you below. You could click the link. I created that guide like eight years ago, something like that, and it's a living document, okay? I update it frequently. So I know people are like, yo, dude, you wrote this in like 2014, 2015. It's 2022. Is it still accurate? I update it if things need to get changed. It's been changed many times throughout the years. So whatever time period other people besides you, Rich, are watching this show, maybe you're watching this show in 2045 on your goddamn hoverboard. I don't know. But at that time, the document will have been updated. So as the time I filmed this video in 2022, which is 22, 24 years after my man Mick Foley took that bump off the cage, hell in a cell, woo! Ric Flair's last match was literally yesterday. But if you're watching this in 2042, I'm sure that will also probably be a true statement because he's had like 10 last match tours. But anyway, I'm trailing off. A lot of the people that watch real estate and don't watch wrestling are like, what in the hell kind of show is this? This is jacked up. Anyway, moral of the story is as I speak today, as this is recorded, this neighborhood, the only way for you to accomplish your goal, Rich, is to be in an F-grade neighborhood, right? Uh, you know, I get... All the politically correct, like, wokey people get upset when I say this, but, like, it's the fucking ghetto, bro. You're going to be in the middle of the goddamn ghetto, right? Like, that's what it is. You're, if you want to do this, you have to invest in a very, very blighted, tough neighborhood, and that's exactly what this is, okay? The only way to get a property that cheap in 2022 uh, is to be in the ghetto, heart of the ghetto. So, like, check out the neighborhood, check out the zip code. Uh, if you go to, like, uh, like, you know, you can go to like the Cuyahoga County, uh, sheriff website and like, you could look up like how many sex offenders are going to be like around the property, things like that. Right. Like sex offenders, felons, like brah, where do you think they live? They live in F grade neighborhoods. Like you're in one of like the worst neighborhoods. Okay. Uh, you have to understand that. Right. So like, this is the property right here. And then, you know, just this street alone, right? One, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Up here, thirteen. All right, we'll go on the other side here. Fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Sixteen, you got another four over here, right? Twenty, okay? Here's another one out of the corner of my eye. Twenty-one, here's another one. Twenty-two, here's another one. Twenty-three, another one. Twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, right? Up there, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, right? Just on this screen. Twenty-eight properties in this general area of right where this house you won't possibly going to be moving across country to live in are 28 houses uh were torn down because what happens is uh really rough neighborhoods like this they get so the houses get so blighted to actually fix them up would be more 
than the actual after repair value. So people just walk away from them. They don't pay the taxes. City forecloses. Then they tear them down because vacant houses in the hardcore ghetto turn into trap houses, right? Like if you're interested in killing a prostitute, uh, what you would do is you would kidnap her and then you would take her to a house like this and then you would murder her, right? That is like what people do. And then the other people living in the neighborhood are like, hey, bro, it really sucks that like that house over there is where people go to inject intravenous drugs in murder prostitutes that's not awesome can you guys tear down this house and then the city's like yeah that really does suck that they're doing drugs and murdering prostitutes over there let's tear that down because we are all in favor of fewer murders in our neighborhoods right the fewer murders the better right real estate is all about location y'all and one thing y'all need to know is and if you're brand new to real estate this is a pro tip for you murder very bad very bad for the value of your home. When buying a home, folks, if you could uh, be as far away from frequent murders as possible, uh, that's going to be better for your property value, right? Uh, junkies, intravenous drugs, trap houses, murders in said trap houses. They're never good for value, okay? That was a pro tip, y'all. That was a freebie. So, uh, Rich. We have established, I do not want you later being like, Dad, Dad, you didn't tell me this is a really rough neighborhood. I'm from out of state. I didn't know. You can't claim that. I fucking give you all the warnings in the world, playa. Uh, you're going to be in a very, very rough neighborhood. Okay? You have to understand that. If living in a neighborhood with this much crime and blight and issues is something you're willing to sign up for, right? You didn't see Mick Foley complaining to Vince McMahon like, oh, I broke my rib. He knew that shit was going to hurt, right? He signed up for that. So you got to understand what you're signing up for, dude. Uh, this would be a property that you could do it, okay? What you would want to do is you would want to live in one half. And the house itself does not look that bad, okay? Currently... There are two tenants in there. One is paying 450, the other's paying 400, okay? It's already vinyl sided, which is good cuz it's not lead certified. You're going to have to lead certify it. So, in an effort to make this work for you, you're going to have to buy the property cash. Uh, I recommend you get a home inspector to to verify uh, and I could go over the inspection report with you that there's no structural issues. If there's no structural issues with this property, I would think you're probably good to move forward with it. It would be the candidate that would work for your plan here. Now, the price is 42500 I don't think you have to pay that price, okay? I don't think there's going to be anybody else dropping $42,500 on this. I believe you being a cash buyer, we could probably negotiate the seller down to a price of about $30,000. So you got to understand, it's like a crapshoot in a neighborhood like this, bro. Like, sometimes these houses just, like, sit because nobody fucking wants to buy them. That's why, again, when I pulled up the map for you, so many of them got torn down. They get to the point where it costs more money to fix them up that people are just like, man, fuck this house, right? So thirty grand, I guess, I guess that would be a fair fair valuation of this particular property. And you got to buy it cash because right now you can't get a loan. So if you were able to get the deal... You're going to pay cash. It would be $30,000. Uh, you just pay it cash. You now got two tenants. It's now going to be up to you to evict one of those tenants. Currently, one pays four fifty, dollars the other pays four hundred, dollars right? So it's up to you. You pick and choose which one you want to evict. That's all you, right? This would be a situation where you're handling all the management. You're building your business by doing the tough stuff, the dirty stuff, the rough stuff, right? So it's all on you. You got to pick which person you're not going to home, and then you're going to move into their unit, right? And then if you want to get the other unit up to market rent, market rent would be roughly seven fifty, dollars right? So here's how the numbers are going to play out, right? And as I understand, Rich, you are a veteran, so thank you for your service, Uh what the smart person would do, smart money is, on eventually pulling out your money. So just because you can't get a loan today as I speak to you, that doesn't mean you won't qualify for one one year from now, two years from now, three years from now, right? Speak with lenders. Speak with folks. See what you can do to improve your credit and your income so you can qualify, right? So after the fact, 
after you move, right? You got the money to move, so just hawk down the cash now. Get the best price possible. Again, I think 30 is probably the best price we can get you because the home itself is, you know, it's pretty decent, right? It's in decent condition. It's just in a very, very tough neighborhood, right? So I think you can get it for 30. When you could eventually refi out, we're not going to make a claim here that you're going to get a bunch of appreciation and be able to get increased value. I don't see this neighborhood increasing in value, dude. It's not trending in a great direction. It'll probably still be worth 30, right? But you can get a VA loan and you'll be living in one of the units so you won't have to put any money down. So they'll give you back 100% of it. Uh, in folks that are not veterans, you could do the same strategy if you got balls made of fucking steel uh, and are willing to deal with the problems that are going to come along with this strategy. Uh, you could do so with an FHA loan. You only need to put down 3.5%, right? So theoretically, you'll get all your money back, right? So you, you have all your money back. So you have no money into the deal. And at that point, you're going to have a monthly cost to live there of about $265, right? So for the year, it would be 3181 And theoretically, you will have increased the rent on the other unit up to market, which is about seven fifty or $9,000. Now, here's the thing. Here's the caveat, dude. I wouldn't rank some neighborhoods as F and then some neighborhoods as B and then some as A if the tenants paid the rent at the same level of frequency, right? So, like, the market rent is seven fifty, but, dude, as you get into the rougher neighborhoods, uh, the frequency in which your tenants actually pay the contracted rent to you goes way, way, way down, right? It's all based on risk-reward, okay? My recommendation was to make sure you get a government-subsidized tenant, right? A Section 8 tenant, a CMHA tenant, right? Some people are like, oh, Section 8 tenants are bad. Folks, it's not that a Section 8 tenant in and of itself is a bad thing. Actually, when you're in a sketchy neighborhood like this, a Section 8 tenant is actually a godsend. They're actually the best kind of tenant you can get, right? Because if you're in a B neighborhood, you're going to get B-grade tenants. You're in a C neighborhood, you're going to get C-grade tenants, D, F, A, so forth, right? So when you're in an F-grade neighborhood, the people that are going to live and rent in F-grade neighborhoods are probably going to be F-grade folks. F-grade folks uh, usually have felonies on their records, very low to no income, do not consistently pay rent. That's the type of tenant base you're going to be dealing with. That is what you're signing up for, okay? In a scenario like that, what you want is a Section 8 tenant because if all you got is F-grade tenants, you want the one who's got the government paying the rent for them because the government don't miss rent payments, right? If the government gets super fucking drunk and beats the living hell out of his girlfriend and goes to jail for the week and loses his job, the government doesn't miss rent and doesn't force you to evict them. You get what I'm saying? So you want a Section 8 tenant, right? So assuming you get that 750, you collect it with a level of frequency which is acceptable to you, you can bank on 750 coming in there. Of course, when you're uh, a human being, you need a roof over your head, right? No matter what, you have to live somewhere, right? So instead of paying some other landlord 750 in rent, you're just going to live in your unit, right? So that's another swing of 750, right? So in totality, between the savings you're creating by not renting someone else's property, now you're paying off your new mortgage that you got for refinancing it, right? You're gonna when there's when there's a roof over your head, you're going to be paying somebody's mortgage, whether it's a landlord's or yours, right? So that's 1500, right? So in totality, you got 15 of like essentially income, half being actual income, the other half being a savings of your disposable income going out. Oh, broke my sign. Hold on. Let's get that fixed. So you got like a swing of 1500 right? From there, you deduct your, your actual costs because remember, you got your whole 30K back. You got 265 from your mortgage, your taxes, insurance. It's <laughs> freaking dirt cheap living, right? So you guys see, if you're willing to put up with the BS, like it can be worth it on the other side, right? When you get to the end of the brick road, could be worth it, right? So that's a savings for you of approximately $1,235 or almost $15,000 a year, right? So you got all your money back and you're essentially created like $15,000 of income coming into you. Now, this doesn't account for like costs, right? Costs being like time costs, right? You got to cut the grass. You got to manage the other tenant. You got to deal with the BS, right? You got to repaint. You're eventually going to need to go in and get this house lead certified. I have a lead certification video in the notes below go ahead and watch that that's why i said it's key that this particular property is already vinyl sided right because your vinyl siding is going to be a huge huge amount of the money you got to spend right another thing is going to be vinyl windows i'm not 100 percent sure how many of the windows in this house are vinyl that's why it's 
imperative that if you want to move forward with this path, we get you a third-party home inspection because you're not physically here to look at it yourself. So you're going to want a third-party home inspector to really break down the condition of this particular property for you and see so you can kind of understand how much it's going to be to get it lead certified. And remember, you're going to need to do a lot of this work yourself. That's what you're signing up for. You're starting from the ground up. You're trying to, you know, I don't know if you're trying to build a business as big as I built, uh, but I don't want you thinking you get to just swoop in here with little to no money, do little to no work, and then eventually you get to be like, yo, dude, I'm fucking rich. I'm a rich landlord. It don't work that way. You're going to get many, 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 many kicks to the dick during this process. So that's the numbers. If the risks and reward make sense to you, this is how you'll accomplish your plan. And again, I think I could beat them sellers up, and I think I can get them all the way down to 30K. It's up to you now to let me know if this plan makes sense for you. If it does, great. I will represent you. We'll put in the offer. If it doesn't, we'll have to go back to the drawing board, perhaps wait a little bit so you can uh, get your credit and income up and then maybe try this plan in a less risky neighborhood. Those choices, my friend, I cannot make for you. Those choices are 100% up to you. All I can do is explain to you what to expect if this is the path you go down. And then from there, it's up to you. Does the risk uh, make sense for the level of reward? Is the juice worth the squeeze, brother? I don't know. You tell me. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.